Today, I wanted to talk about these capacitors. Capacitors, and I wanted to explain a little bit about what they do, what their purpose is, and so on. Now, these capacitors, they're always there, not always, but they're usually there on single phase motors, single phase compressors, condenser fan motors, evaporator fan motors, and so on. There are different types of capacitors. Here in this industry, for what we do, we're usually going to use either a run capacitor <clears throat> or a start capacitor, one of those two. The, uh, the symbol for a capacitor is going to look like this. So anytime you see this, that represents a capacitor. Sometimes on some schematics, you're going to see this as a symbol for a capacitor. Now you have to be careful because that looks like a normally open set of contacts but you have to understand what the schematic is trying to say because there is trying to tell you that that is a capacitor. So either of these two is the symbol for a capacitor. Now, the capacitors are used mostly on, on motors and we have two different types of capacitors that we are going to be seeing. One is gonna be the run capacitor. The run capacitor is gonna be used on motors and compressors when the motor or compressor is running. So the name is going to tell you what they do. They're there to help when it is running. On the other hand, the start capacitor, well, it's going to be only used when it starts up, only on startup. And then once it starts up at about 75% of the motor speed is going to be taken out of the circuit. They're going to take the capacitor completely out because it is a start capacitor. It's only used on startup. Now, a long time ago I was told that if it's a round shape, then it's going to be a start capacitor. If it's oval shaped, then it's going to be a run capacitor. Well, that's not so. That's not so. The main difference between the two is that the run capacitor is going to be much lower microfarads. The run capacitor is going to be higher microfarads. When I say low, I mean five, seven and a half, 10, 25, 30, 45, 50 microfarads. A star capacitor, you're looking at 150, 200, 3, 450 microfarads. It just depends. So keep that in mind. That's the main difference. Also, when you look at a star capacitor, well, you can see that it's black. It's plastic. And that's actually what they call Bakelite. It's a very good insulator because that's gonna hold more energy, more power, so they wanna insulate it very well, make sure it, the electricity does not leak out, let's say. So you have your start capacitors that will be energized only on startup and get taken out at about 75% of the motor speed. The run capacitors, they're gonna be used when the compressor or the, the, let's say the motor is running whether it's an evaporator motor, condenser motor, compressor motor. On startup, it's gonna get power instantly, and as long as it's running, it's gonna be supplying power to the device. Now, when you replace these, when you replace these, you need to know one is the voltage, and the other one is going to be the microfarads. Very, very important. You have to know those two. Now, voltage is like anything else. If we have let's say 480 volts coming in, and we put one in there that's, let's say 370 volts, well, we're feeding more voltage to it than it can handle, so we're gonna burn it up. So you have to be very, very careful on the voltage, just like anything else. Gotta have the correct voltage. Then the microfarads. That is a measurement of, let's say, energy. Okay, it's a measurement of energy, and it's just like voltage, when you read voltage, when you read resistance, when you read, you know, amperage, you're measuring the, these energy readings. You're getting all these readings. Well, microfarads is basically the same thing. What it is, it is telling you how much energy is putting into that motor. So the higher the number, the more energy is gonna be putting into that motor. That's why that number is very important. So if let's say we have a five and we put a 15 or a 20 microfarad in there, 
Now we're going to be feeding that much energy into it, which means that what's going to happen? We're going to burn it up. So we need to stay real close to what the manufacturers are telling you that it needs to be. If you're taking, if you have a five, then replace it with a five. If it's a seven and a half, replace it with a seven and a half. You put something lower, you're not going to be giving it the power that it needs. Now, how do you know if the capacitor is good or bad? Well, one of the things that I always tell the students is when you get to the unit, if the motor is just, let's say it's a fan motor, it's just sitting there humming, give it a spin. If it spins, then most likely is your capacitor. I said most likely. I didn't say it was. So we have to test the capacitor. How are we going to test it? Well, when I started doing this a long time ago, I was told that you, what you do is you take the capacitor, hook up your ohm meter to it, and when you hook up your ohm meter, you're going to see the needle go up and come back down. Well, that's kind of true, and it does happen, but you hook it up, and then you take it off. When you hook them up again, you switch the leads around. What's happening is, when you do it the first time, you're charging the capacitor because these are like a battery. They're gonna hold the charge. So now, you're charging the capacitor. When you switch the leads around, you're discharging and charging the capacitor. That's why the needle goes up and comes back down. So the ohm meter is only gonna tell you if this can hold a charge, if this can hold a charge. Let's say, for example, your battery. Your battery in your car. It's supposed to be 12 and a half volts, 12.6 volts. That's the full charge of a car battery, 12.6. But sometimes it can only hold, let's say, 8 volts. Is it holding a charge? Yes, it is. But is it the right charge? No, it's not. Same thing with a capacitor. When you have a capacitor, you're going to test it. You use a meter that actually reads microfarads. It reads microfarads. So you set your meter to microfarads put the leads on the capacitor, and then the, capac the, the meter is going to tell you how much capacitance this has. And you compare the reading to what it says on the capacitor. Now you know that the capacitor is real close. If the, vol if the capacitance is too low, then you replace the capacitor. If it's a 7.5, and it is not 7.5, but let's say it's a 5. When you read it, it reads 5 instead of 7.5 then replace the capacitor, the capacitor is bad. It is holding a charge, but not the correct amount. Very, very important. Another thing is that these hold the charge, like I was saying. These are very much like a battery. One of the differences is that the battery is going to get charged, but it takes a long time to charge it. A capacitor will charge practically instantly. It charges real fast, and it will give you all of the energy that it has in it as fast as it can. So it's good in that sense because it can charge fast and discharge fast, as fast as we need it. So that's really good about capacitors. And in my opinion, one day cars, the electric cars, they're not going to be using batteries, they're going to be going to capacitors because then they will charge super fast. But that's just the way I see it. Anyway, getting back to capacitors, so these capacitors, yes, you can have the run capacitor, you have the star capacitor. To test them, you test them with a microfarad tester. It has to actually give you the number. I have seen some that just light up. Well, you need to know exactly how many microfarads this can charge to. Again, like I said, be careful with these because these will hold a charge. And when we look at these, the voltage, for example, on these, the voltage, let's say, on this one is 370 volts. It's not going to say 220, but it's going to say 370. Why? Because capacitors, they charge to what they call peak voltage. Peak voltage. Typically, your meter, when you have a voltmeter, is going to, you're going to take a volt reading, and the meter is going to give you the volt reading in what they call RMS root mean square. That's what your voltmeter usually tells you. But these actually charge to peak voltage, which is much higher than the RMS. So when you get shocked, 
yeah, it's going to hurt a lot more because the voltage is going to be higher. So keep all these things in mind. When you're working on a system that has a capacitor, if it has a charge in it, you're going to get shocked. So you need to discharge the capacitor. To discharge the capacitor, you're supposed to use a 20K ohm resistor and it's supposed to be approximately 5 watts. You take the resistor, put it across here, and it will slowly discharge the capacitor. But most people, what is it that they do? They reach in their back pocket, pull out a screwdriver, and put it across here. And does that work? Yes, it works. But the charge in here is going to be going from one to the other super fast. Because of that, you're going to shock the capacitor, and now you're going to weaken the capacitor. So we really don't want to just pull out a screwdriver, go across like this, even though that's usually what people do. You need that resistor. Again, it's a 20K ohm resistor and about five, five watts. Put it across there and discharge it slowly. You gotta discharge it slowly. So be careful with capacitors. This capacitor here, one of my students gave it to me one day. He brought it into class and he said, look what I found. Well, it had completely, as you can tell, melted. So, all energy, electricity, yes, this is, what it will, this is what it will do to things. Be very careful out there with electrical equipment because, yes, it will hurt you. Now, I hope this helped. There's more to talk about in capacitors and hooking them up and what they actually do, but we'll get to that on another video. I hope this helped. Again, my name is Julio, Aircon Academy. Make sure you like the video, go to YouTube, check out my other videos there, like the videos, and follow me on YouTube. Hopefully all this helps. Thanks a lot.